it? You first start with Palfish. You receive trials and part of marketing yourself is using the tools that Palfish give you. So we're a little bit shiny over here. Ooh, there we go. So Palfish give you tools that you can use for free. That's part of, oh look, there we go. We're on, we're on uh, YouTube. Let's move this light over here. Can everyone see me okay? <laughs> All right. Hi, YouTube. So we are live over on YouTube now, so that is great. We're gonna start recording. Okay, fantastic. So when you start with Palfish, you receive trials and eventually you're not on the top of the trial list anymore. So you might wonder, well, why did my bookings go down? What can I do? There are things you can do. So we've already had, this is part three in a series. The first one was talking about free talk, Tuesday talk about talk about free talk then we talked about live stream classes which a few of you have already been brave and done some this past week I know um, Bella's been amazing doing drawing and cooking it's so cool so that is really great so another one of the free tools that Palfish give you is the reading app so it is a separate app and if you want to have a look at one of my previous YouTube videos called is Palfish a scam no, it's not. That shows you the four different apps that um, are within Palfish. Four different Palfish apps. Yes, lives are so fun. Hi, Joy. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. So, lives, yes, they are so fun. In the beginning, it is kind of nerve wracking because you don't really know what you're doing in the beginning and then you figure it out and it gets better. It really does get better. So the reading app is another app that you can download for free. It's a free app, so that's amazing. So today we're talking <laughs> about the reading app and how you can really use this to your advantage. And by the end of the video, you will know how to make the best of this free tool. So this helps you to meet new students and increase your bookings. So stay to the end for my bonus tip. I'm so excited. I actually have two bonus tips to share with you today. So if you're excited about this, give us a thumbs up over here on YouTube and some hearts over here. I'm so excited to share with you on what I did to help me get to where I am today. So the reading app, have you heard of it? Have you used it? If you have, uh, type a yes in the chat box for me and let's what I've actually done is I've got my phone with me today so we can have a look straight on the phone we even have the iPad so I just learned something new yesterday it's always you can always learn something new from um, even if you've been somewhere for a while I, I even if I have the time I still like to attend <laughs> sorry my curtains falling down I do still like to attend training because I still learn new things and yesterday I learnt that on an iPad the reading app can go landscape. I did not know that. So that was something interesting that I just learned yesterday. But on the phone I've only, um, this is an Android phone, so let me know in the chat box if you're watching the replay, can you go landscape on an iPhone? I'd be interested to know and we can share with each other. So I'm just using the phone today to show you because that's easier. It's definitely a learning curve, Bella. Yes, absolutely. But it does help you connect with um, so many students. It's such an amazing tool. So why is the reading app a good idea? Let's make sure I get all my notes correct here. All right, so we're on to the next page. I wanted to be nice and organized so we remember everything today. So the reading app is a free app that teachers and students can download. Hi there, Yvonne, nice to have you with us, thank you. So I don't know of recent times whether it's number one or number two in China. It's very popular in China. So it's an amazing way to meet students. So why do students like the reading app? It is free to download and they can read books and be scored by an AI bot as to their pronunciation and it helps them to improve. And then they can also be in a group with their friends uh, they can like each other's books. They can be in a little group together. They can have challenges. 
So it's a really fun thing. Um, the kids really enjoy it. So let me look at my notes. In the reading app, so st students can listen to and like their own friends' books, but they can also listen to and like our books, which means we can listen and like their books too. So this is where we find the students in the reading app. So when students and teachers read books, you receive rewards. They're little shells. So right here you can see I've got shells here. Uh, we'll be doing an on-screen tutorial um, in another time. I will be recording that so you can see it on the screen. So you get shells as your reward. Now why are shells important? They are like the currency of the Palfish Reading app. So you can, students and teachers alike, can use these shells to redeem online little rewards. They're like characters that will float around the screen. Um, you can make a poster with your face in it when you've redeemed a new reward or award and you can share that with your friends. You can share that with students in the reading app as well. So the students have an extra part. They can actually redeem Palfish merchandise with these rewards so that you can tell that they really love it. They have like Palfish caps, pencil cases, backpacks, t-shirts, a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm not sure if teachers can get that. I think you would have to be in China to be able to take advantage of that. So the main function of the reading app is to read books, but there are other functions as well. Teachers can set up a reading class group and students Parent, teachers and students can challenge each other to a little game. It's really cool. Do you have a live? We can learn how to move around the reading app. I will actually put a link at the end of this video to Ms. Melissa Ann. She is a mentor in Palfish and she speaks Chinese. So she is a fantastic resource and she has a lot of tutorials about the reading app and I did start doing one yesterday so I will have that soon oh thank you for the hearts so uh, keep a lookout for that but yes in the meantime hi there Leoshi it in the meantime you can have a look at Miss um, Melissa Ann's and you can look her up yes her apps her videos about the reading app are amazing let's look at the next part so with the online rewards there's two things within Palfish there's shells and there's flowers. So we'll talk about flowers later and they serve a different purpose. Okay, so with the little game that you can play with the students, it's really fun. There's, it's like six questions. This is six in Chinese. Six questions, they're like a multiple choice quiz. You just tap on the correct answer, but it's based on books that the students have read. So they are really cute. And then at the end, it says who won and it puts a little thing in your chat box to say, that you uh, want to challenge and it's really cute. Uh, so the students like that too because they earn shells even for playing these games. So there's a lot that the students can do in there. It's really cool. They really enjoy it. Sometimes you'll get a message from students. Can you play a game with me? It's called PK. PK. So if you see those letters PK, that is the, the name. That's the name of the game. <laughs> So the, the main app is reading books. So let's have a look at the home screen. This is the book section. Just a couple of the things I wanna to highlight today. The other one is, we'll talk about this one later. One of my bonus tips is regarding this one. And these are the two that I want, oh, and the class. We'll talk about how to do a class today, a reading app. It's called a class, but it's kind of like a group, like a reading group. So how do you find students. How do we find students? <laughs> we can talk. Let's have a look at the screen. So if you are watching the replay, let me know if you've received any interesting messages in Chinese asking questions that you're not quite sure about. There's a translate button. So just so you know, you can click and hold on any messages in Chinese and you can translate those in a chat box. Otherwise, you can do a screenshot and use um, Google Translate. 
I did a lot of Google translating in the beginning because I don't speak Chinese, I don't read Chinese, so I wanted to know what it was all about. So I did spend a bit of time learning what it was all about so that I could make the best use of it. So when you read a book, so we'll get back to that, when you read a book, it automatically posts over to your teacher app. You don't need to do that separately. Oh, I'm glad, Lisa. I'm glad that helped. With other parts of a book, so if you are liking a book or commenting on a book, that does not translate or transfer, what's the word, migrate over to the teacher app. But the books do. So you don't have to manually then go over and uh, post the books. Now if you do have WeChat and it pops up with a WeChat message, you don't have to post that to WeChat. You can just, if you want to, you can. You can share it with whoever is on your WeChat. But you can just press the X button to go out and that is fine to continue that way. If you have any other problems, um, send me a message and I'll see what we can sort out together. So we don't have to do that manually. But the other thing to just keep in mind, because books do post manually to your teacher app in your feed for your moments section, you don't want to have like a run of 20 books and then nothing else in between. So it is a good idea to mix up your moments section on your teacher app. Um, you have three different moments you can do, video, audio, and pictures. So I like to mix it up and um, do different things so it doesn't look boring a whole run on the same things but we will talk about moments I'm going to talk about that next week in Tuesday talk about so if you're excited about that give me a thumbs up if you're excited and we will talk about that next week so let's have a look some students can buy a paid version of the app um, and it would show VIP on their profile I didn't purchase it there's no need for teachers to purchase it I did see some teachers who did that, but that's not, not necessary. Thanks, Bethany. Thanks, Bella. Oh, I love it. All the thumbs up. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So when you read a book, let's find a book. Let's go straight into it. If you have your reading app with you, you can follow along, or if you want to take notes now and do it later, or you could come back and watch the replay and pause the video and follow along with me. So on the front screen, we want to go to the little frog. So when this opens up, you'll see the alphabet along the top. These are not the titles of the book. These are the difficulty of each book. So the categories of uh, difficulty. So if we look at A, obviously that's gonna be the easiest for the youngest students. So we can click on so I've already done a tutorial on one of these. So let's go to, let's go C for cat. So it just happens that on the letter A, it has all the letters of the alphabet on there. So we can click on the C book. And when we look at the bottom, so it has three things there. It has listen, record, and challenge. So that's that little game that you can play. If we have a look, we can actually listen to the teacher who has recorded this book and it stays on there for students to listen to. Hi, thanks for joining us. And, and where are we? So we can listen to and record this for ourselves and that will go over to our profile. Uh, well, let's do that. That was fun last week and then you can actually go to my profile and see that. So I'm going to record this. All right, let's try and be quiet here. First of all, it will play the teacher who has recorded it for the students. Okay, so we press on the record button. Press on the record button in the bottom left. It will play the teacher who's um, giving the students an example of how to read it. Big C. So you press start to record it, and sorry, the microphone, and then you press it again to stop. Uh, a, a note to remember, sometimes if you press it and start speaking too soon, it won't hear you. Um, you'll see some of the kids, it like will cut off the first syllable of their word. So let's do that one again. I don't think it liked that one. All right, let's, oh, there we go. So it'll actually say recording, uploading when you press go. Big C. 
Okay, and it'll say recording is uploading. For each page, we can do that. Little C. Okay, it's uploading. Cup. Cup. So it's good to read it in different inflections. Cake. Cake. So you can actually go and have a look at my teacher profile and you'll see this one. Cat. Cat. Meow. I like to put in a little bit of something extra. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll come back to that. I'll finish this book, Alba. All right. Letter C. Okay, so that's recording. So when we get to the last page and we record it, it will come up to say, publish. So when we press publish at the bottom of the screen, that will send it to our teacher app. Now I do have, oh there we go. So it gives you shells for recording a book as well. And then if students or other teachers come and listen and like your book, you receive extra shells as well. So Alba, if you look on my website, there is a link on the OKC page for downloading the reading app. For um, Android, it's not on the, the Google Play Store. So there's a link uh, on my website for my referrals. I have a page there. Alba just joined yes yesterday, day before. <laughs> so you'll be able to find the link there and download the app. You can rewatch this later and pause it and follow along in your reading app. Okay, so I've recorded that book. If you were to go over to my teacher app now, I suppose I could do that. So let me log in over here to show that to you because I want to show you one other thing about that. So on your, on your home screen, you go to your moments section here, the moments here, click on that and that's going to show, <laughs> that's going to show the book that I just read. So let us see. That's the book I just read. Now I have a little test for you to do. You can rewatch this later if you want or have a little test. If we do a thumbs up here, someone's already given it a thumbs up. If you thumbs up on here, you will not see that thumbs up in the reading app. So that's another little thing that's different. When you're in the reading app, the only thing that transfers across is recording of books. Everything else must be done in the reading app for the students to see it in the reading app. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over to there. So if we go to my profile, let's do that up in there. Oh, okay. So here's my profile on the reading app and this is the letter C book. Oh, okay, Bella, I shall. Here's the letter C book on the reading app. So the only thing that does migrate across from the reading app to the teacher app is when you record a book, it will post on your teacher app. But if you give a thumbs up in the reading app, you will not see it on that post in the teacher app. And if you put a thumbs up on a book in the teacher app, it will not migrate over to the reading app. I hope that's clear. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and let me know. If you have any extra questions about that. Oh, thanks, Bella. Thank you for welcoming Alba. Uh, Alba was right after you, Bella, so that's cool. The thumbs up in moments doesn't transfer to the reading app. That is correct. The thumbs up, wherever you click thumbs up, it's only in that app. Thank you. All right, we got it. Awesome. So when we go into the reading app, um, I can give myself a thumbs up. I think I get shells for that too. So when you like your teacher friend's books, you're probably better off doing it in the reading app because then that gives them shells and then they can share that with their students. Okay, so how do we find students? That helped us. Oh, look, I got some shells already just for reading that book. So I've shown you quickly how you can record a book and that will go on your teacher profile and on your profile in the reading app. But how do you find students? Okay, Lisa wants to know, how do you create a page for teachers on the reading app? Oh, great, excellent point. I did forget to write that in my notes. Thanks, Lisa, great question. When you set up your teaching app on the Palfish Teacher app, you use the same login and password for the reading app. 
when you first go to the reading app page it will show you the student login page if you look really carefully in the top right it will say for teachers or for teachers only you must click on that and then it will come up because it knows that you already have a login and you would use your same login and password that you use on the teaching app if you log in and it looks weird and things aren't working right it's possible that you accidentally logged in on the student page so definitely uh, log out go back to the login page and have a look if it says for teachers up the top right you need to click that and that's how you enter the only issue that you may find is if you have a really complicated password that has something other than numbers and letters it the reading app won't accept it so the way you would have to fix that is go back to the teacher app change your password to only include numbers and letters and then you can log back into the reading app so I hope that that is helpful <laughs> people are already liking the um, <laughs> people are already liking the book so that's cute if you go in there you can send me a message hey I'm watching this live right now <sighs> okay so that's how you actually log in Lisa you already have a page created it's just that you need to log into the app and it's already there for you I hope that was helpful give me a thumbs up if that was explanatory awesome thanks Lisa all right very good so when how do we find students we really know that this is a great tool. It's a free tool that Palfish has given us. They want us to be successful. So how do we find students? So when we go into a book, let's use, last time we used the numbers, we're gonna click on the first book in under the letter A. So A is for the difficulty of the book, not the, le the, not the title of the book. And if you have a look, a top, across the top you'll see details and good works. So you want to click on Good Works. Within Good Works, there are three more tabs. I hope I'm speaking slow enough if you want to keep up. There is Popular, Ranking, and Latest. Now obviously we want to see who's on the reading app either right now or sometime today so that we know that they are current. So we want to click on Latest. So we have three tabs across the top underneath the two tabs from before so latest now right now it's 10 39 p.m. in China so one tip it's always good to listen to the book if you're in a hurry I understand if you don't want to listen to every page because if you're trying to follow a bunch of students you might not have time to listen to all of them but it's good to listen to at least the first page because adults actually use this too or sometimes the parents might use their, their children's account while the kids have gone to sleep because some of the adults want to practice too. So I always listen to see if it is um, a child reading. So we have one here, someone's just recorded this book. So this is showing recordings of this book. So we could press on the play, oh let me go back. If we click on the blue um, triangle, it's like a play button, click on that and it's going to read the book to us. This is a student. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Oh, thanks, Alba. Five. Five. Six. Ooh, six. All right, there's six. There we go. Now, just for listening to the book, we've given the student shells, and I think we get shells too. <laughs> so what can we do now we've listened to the students book how else can we interact with them so I've written down an awesome list which I remember anyway so you listen to the book you want to like the book you want to follow the student you want to add a public comment on the book I'll show you how to do that and then you want to send them a private message in the private chat one of the other things I love about Palfish, you have direct connections with the students and the parents, so you can send them a direct message to introduce yourself. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Okay, we're going to come back to that bit there. All right, let me write this down. We're going to come back to VIP. Okay. Okay, 
if you read a book, you can forward it to a student in the reading app, just to let you know that. If I have an older student that has a homework book, a book within the app as their homework after a lesson, I will read it too and then I'll forward it to them and then I'll comment when they read their book. You cannot send um, picture attachments in the reading app, but you can type and voice message to students in the reading app. So these are my extra tips. Okay. Yes. Oh, but if you make a poster of yourself, you can forward that to students. Yes, I know, Alba, I'm going to be typing out all these notes. Well, these are my notes. So I'm going to add these to the website for you and other teachers. Um, my referrals have a, an extra page that I give them all the information that helped me. So I will add that so you can follow along with the video as well as written. Write in the chat box for me. What do you prefer? Do you prefer watching a video? And I know this is live and, and I love to talk. I feel like I'm having a conversation with you. So I hope this is okay. Uh, but some people like to read. I actually really like to read. I do like to listen and watch a video, but sometimes I just want to read something. So type in the chat for me. Let me know, what's your preferred method of learning? Or do you like multiple? Let me know, I'd love to find out. So, Alba, yes, so much to learn. You asked about the poster. Oh, Bethany, okay, the poster. So when, okay, we'll, we'll get to that. Sorry, I kind of jumped ahead with that little tip. So I will get back to the poster. I'm gonna write it down. Poster, sorry if I'm wobbling the camera. <laughs> Posters, all right, we'll come back to that. <laughs> okay. So, if this is helpful, please let me know. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that the website's helpful. I'm glad, Bella, that's great, thank you. All right, so if this is good and helpful and you've learned something so far, give me a thumbs up and let me know I'm doing a great job. And if you have any questions, we will get to those. All right, so how do we find the students? We've listened to the book. This is all we've done. So we're going to press the X button to go back. I'm going to click into this book. So we open that same book that we just listened to. And there's three things you want to, um, one, two, three, three things you want to do on this page. So this is the actual book page. So this is not yet the student's profile. This is a book recording from this student. We want to give them a thumbs up. So give them a like. We want to follow them by pressing the heart button. Let's see if I can press. The heart button on the left, that's how you follow the student, heart. And if you were to look in your teacher app, you'll see them in your following list. Yes, you are following. The next thing is down the bottom, this is where we can type a public chat, a public comment. You would only ever want to put something positive in, in this section here. If you thought that it might be helpful for letting them know something that they could work on, you would do that in a private chat and we'll get to that. So we're going to type in here, uh, great job reading. Some people will, some people add in a, a picture message that, you know, is a, is a picture of thumbs up or great job. But the only thing I don't like about that is if the student doesn't read English, they can't translate the picture. Does that make sense? I prefer to type the words in the chat box because they can press and hold to translate it from English to Chinese. So then they know what we're talking about. So that's how I prefer to do it. But I love emojis. If any of you have been online with me, I'm always putting emojis. I can't help it. I just love them. So <laughs> I'm going to put a bunch of emojis, happy, thumbs up, um, a star, a, um, what's this one called? Celebration. Thing. So I just put something simple. It doesn't have to be fancy. Now some people like to make up a pre-recorded, uh, sorry, a pre-typed message you can copy and paste. And that's fine if you want to do that. In the beginning you might be following and liking a lot of books and you want to streamline your time and make it uh, more efficient. 
that is fine. So once we've typed in our comment, we're going to press, it actually says reply in blue. So we're going to press reply. That will post the public comment. Okay, so just to show you, we're going to, all right, okay. So I want to show you something. I talked about if you follow a student and then you go over to the teacher app, how do you find them? <laughs> so let's do that. We've followed this student now, so they should be the top person. It, it runs backwards. So it'll have the most recent person that you've followed. So if you go to your teacher page, I'm on a phone. The phone has three tiles across. On the iPad, it has four tiles across. So I'm going to scroll down to my... So this is the people that follow you, and then this is the people that you follow. It ha actually has a heart. I didn't even notice that before. So it has a red heart. So we're going to click on that. And this student will be the most recent person that I have followed. So it actually splits it up into teacher and student. So I'm going to click on the student tab. Yes, I'm saving this live, Gabby. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. The replay will also be on YouTube. So excellent. So la 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 la. All right, so what does their avatar look like? So how do we know? So it's this one here. Oh, I apologize. I made a mistake. So I'm going to fix that right now. Okay. So I apologize. There's two places you'll see a heart. Okay. Have fun, Bella. Catch up with you later. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. There are two places you'll see a heart. When you're looking at the actual book page and you press a heart, this, this is when you favorite this book. And there's another page on your profile that shows all the books that you've clicked to choose as a favorite. And it can add it into a playlist and you can just play them over. Hi, Lena. Hi, ESL Online. Teacher Pillar. Thanks for joining us. So when I pressed the heart before, this was actually favoriting, is that a word? This book. So how do I follow the student? So we've completed everything we wanted to do on this page. We've given a thumbs up, a comment. This was not actually how to follow the student. So we're gonna press the back button and we're gonna click on their avatar to open their page. So this is now the student profile on the reading app. It doesn't have their face on it. It's just an emoji, so I'm okay with showing it. So this will show us all the books that they have read. Okay. So I know that I have given them a thumbs up on the numbers book and have a look at that. They've already read two more books since I had a look at that book there. So we can see that I've given that a thumbs up. Now, how do we follow the student? We're going to go to the top to their profile and this heart. I apologize. This is the one we want on their profile page. We want to press the heart. And now let's go to the heart over on the teacher app so you can find the student. Now there's a tip about this. There's a reason why you want to do this. All right, so let's go over into there, into the people that I'm following, student tab. All right, now here is this student. Now, if you have a look, these are some of the students that I'm following. But this will actually show you, I'll do another on-screen tutorial so you can see it properly. This says zero hours. What does this mean? This means they're not yet taking classes with Palfish. What does, that, what does this tell us? That they might be looking for a teacher. They might want to avail of the free trial that they can get when they join the reading app. So we'll talk about that later. And it also tells us that um, we're okay to send them a message and introduce ourselves. So, oh, I was going to show you. Click on their profile. So this is looking at the student profile in the teacher app. Okay, so it already says I followed them. Okay, and let's go, we'll scroll down to find that book that we listened to. We listened to the numbers book. See, there's no thumbs up and there is no comment. So those do not transfer across, but the student is going to be looking at this on the reading app. This likely tells us that they're only using the reading app as a free app, and that may be the extent of their interaction, but they may choose to take a class later on, and that's why we want to meet new students, 
and uh, invite invite ourselves invite invite them <laughs> to meet us so the other thing when you see the hours in that section it doesn't even if they do have hours it doesn't tell us that it doesn't tell us the difference between whether they are a free talk student or an official course student it doesn't tell us that and it also doesn't tell us who they may be taking regular classes with so I was given some advice in the beginning from um, another teacher who'd been here a while I've been here since December 2018 and they described it as it's a learning community we don't own the students they're not our students they are in our heart there is there they are ours in our heart but it's a learning community so they may actually see you once a week and someone else another time that week um, so it doesn't tell you you know who they take regular classes with so if you just want to be careful you don't want to upset anyone that thinks you're poaching students you're just making yourself um, notice to you're just making yourself um, you know promoting yourself that, that you are there it's, it's all about marketing in the Palfish app it's a social learning platform with other tools to help yourself um, make yourself known or make students aware that you're there so we've looked at their profile over on the teacher app now the other reason I wanted to show you that is if the student did happen to buy the upgrade for the paid app they have access to VIP books that if you don't have the upgrade you can't read them you can read I think the first two pages and then it says you need to buy this so the same if you're listening to a book that's been read by a student that has the VIP and you you listen to two books and it will pop up saying you need to buy this so the workaround you go over to your teacher app you can actually listen to it on the teacher app so that was a little trick that I found which no one told me about I just found it by myself you might already know this but I just wanted to share so then you would pop back over to the reading app to put your comments and likes and things like that so that will help you you are welcome to go through and we were looking at the a book you can if you wanted to attract students who are older or more advanced in their English you would just scroll across and find some higher level books so right at the end letter Z would be the most difficult books that are within Palfish so we can um, click on that and uh, you could listen to those and send them a message and maybe you'll get some higher level students so I hope that has been helpful. That's how you read, um, listen to a book, follow a student. Oh, I forgot one thing. So what we wanted to do was, with that student, we wanted to send them a private message. So we didn't get back to that. So good works, latest tab. Okay, that was, okay, I've actually lost them now because <laughs> it's amazing how many people read these books. So that's fine. We'll just click on any for now. So we we want to click on the student profile. So let's choose this one that's just an avatar. It's not a student's face. And to send them a private chat, you've got the little chat box here. So you could send them maybe a pre-typed message that you want to copy and paste. Hi, my name's Christy. It's nice to meet you. Your reading is very good. Something encouraging and letting them know that you're available if um, they are looking for a new teacher. So the smart thing that I love about Palfish, they're so innovative, they don't spend a lot of money on outside marketing. They have created this amazing app that students can use for free or they may choose to buy the paid version, but that's where a lot of the students come from because when they sign up with the reading app, they are presented with the offer of a free trial to have a class and see if they like it and then purchase the package and sometimes their friends from school or relatives will refer them and sometimes you'll end up teaching school friends and um, and cousins and siblings so it's a really cool um, networking area so that was another reason that I really loved that so remember we want to listen like the book follow the student leave a public comment and send them a private chat message depending on which mentor group you're in. When you join Palfish, you're added to two groups, the admin group and a mentor group. 
So your mentor may have um, ideas for you on how many you should try and do a day in the beginning because this is how you find students and um, Okay. Yes, Alba. Some of it is in Chinese. Uh, it, most of it is in Chinese. So you just want to look for. Whoo, got some more shells. You just want to look for the frog to read and listen to books. And we're going to now talk about this one that looks like a merry-go-round. This one is called the grow-up moments. Okay, so we're into the bonus, the bonus information here. All right. So let's go to. The bonus section. Okay. All right. I really love this one. Okay. I'm jumping ahead here, but let's do that now. The grow up section. So just like we can post videos um, and picture moments and audio moments in the teacher app, the students can do this in the grow up section of the reading app. Now, when I first started, it was available for teachers to post in there and then it was taken away. It's recently been, uh, I think, put, put back in. I've seen teachers posting in there now. So you can actually, and uh, this, is, this is one of my top tips, I believe that this was one of, the, uh, one of the first regular students I got was from a little short video moment I posted in this section, the grow up moments. And I, I really love bugs and animals, right? So I had, posted something about ladybugs. I love ladybugs. And one time I even had an actual ladybug. Um, I was staying in the mountains and it was, it came into the room that I was teaching in. So I put it on my hand and I made a little video. So this student, he's only four and he loves ladybugs too. And I got a message from, from one of the head teachers. Hi Judy, thanks for joining us. I got a message from a head teacher. This student really likes you. And I found out later on that that's why. He likes bugs like me. And so we had this connection. So my, okay, so it's a top tip. So be posting in the, the kids app in the grow up section, which is the carousel. But to be honest, like I mentioned, if you're just posting a picture with words on it, the, the students can't translate that. So the best way would to be to post a short video educational, fun, interesting, lots of bright ideas um, to, to get the attention of students, but to make it short. If you make it too long, some students don't have very good internet and so they, it might take too long to, to even start playing and they'll give up and won't watch it. If you go back way in the beginning of my moments, I was at a friend's house and he has a fish pond. He has those big orange koi fish. I don't know, there was like five or six in there so I just did a short video and I talked about the fish I got so many comments on that post in the reading app in the grow up section so that's gold right there so you want to be doing that would you recommend posting equally here as you would in the teacher app um, now I'll let you know I learned about this from mentor US Angel who also has a YouTube channel. She's a mentor in Palfish. And she um, showed me, told me about that. I learned it in one of her trainings. And she suggested, I think, was it twice a week? I mean, it's really up to you how much you would like to post in there, but that's reaching the students that are only in the reading app. But then you've got students who may not even use the reading app. I have official students who don't use the reading app. So they would be using the kids app which they would see your regular moments. I hope that makes sense. So it's really a personal choice as to whether you would be posting equally here or there, but definitely mix it up. Don't do like 20 books and then one moment. I would suggest changing it up. That would be my advice. Okay, so that was one of my top tips, the grow up section. So keep it short. And when you follow students, by the way, sometimes they'll follow you back. They may not take a class with you, but they may. And the other thing, because I mentioned it's a social teaching platform, um, a lot of the students go in and follow everyone that everyone else is following. So in the end, you may end up getting um, classes from students and you think, oh, how did they find me? And sometimes you never know. Yes, Lisa. 
at the moment I just yesterday I saw a teacher posting a moment in the reading app on the grow up section and yes so that is correct so the way you would do that when you go into the grow up moment and you would go uh, there's a plus so here's a plus symbol a plus at the bottom you would click on that and it will say do you want to do video or pictures and text to be honest I wouldn't be spending time on pictures and text because the kids want to hear your English they want to see you animated as a teacher what is it like in your classroom so I would definitely go video and then it pops up into your okay so it pops up in a blank you would start filling that in and you would grab your video that you've already recorded on your device and you can upload it from there okay question I also read it was recommended to comment on yes excellent good thinking yes so you can also comment on the student moments in the reading app in the grow up section yes so that is what that's referring to you, you probably won't see many uh, moments in the teacher app you'll see them in the Palfish app a reading app okay I will help you <laughs> after Alba no worries you can rewatch the video when it's downloaded for you and then you can follow along from there. Thanks for your patience. We will get you set up, no worries at all. So there's something else I was gonna say. <laughs> Grow up moments. Grow up moments, it was something that, uh, da -da 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 -da. I wasn't seeing them in the teacher app. Yes, so they will, like I said, when you post in the reading app, the only thing that will migrate across to the teacher app is when you record a book and when you follow someone. So that was the other thing. Okay. Oh, I was going to say something else and now I forget. Oh, the other reason that I love to post a video is you can see how many views it has. <laughs> Just like on social media, if you post like a, a picture, you don't really know how many people have seen it. But if you post a video, it shows how many times it's been viewed. And I think I was looking yesterday preparing for this training and one of my videos in that grow up section in the reading app got like 800 views. So some people worry that there aren't enough students to go around. Well, do you remember how many people are in China? Like a billion or I don't know, however many it is, it's, it's a lot. There are a lot of students and there are enough to go around. Um, I my schedule is bursting at the seams and I still have students messaging me do you have more time and no I don't have more time but the students that suit you will find you so when you're doing these video moments or whatever you're doing you have to be yourself I've got that on my website be yourself you have to be you because that's who they're coming to the class to see so I hope that's been helpful I know I don't have very good lighting here today I'm sorry okay so I hope that was helpful there. Now, where was my other tip? Yes, so I told you about the VIP book. If you can't listen to it in the reading app, you can listen to it in the teacher app. Okay. So yes, it is all about exposure. Okay. Oh yes, okay. One other bonus tip at the end. So I told you about the grow up moments I really think that that was so helpful and the other thing was that you can actually so when you're logged into your teacher app in a class you can't log into the teacher app on another device it will log you out so if I'm teaching on this device and I try to log in over here this one will be logged out and this one will be current so if you say you're in um, a class and there's a problem and you're like oh I need to message my admin or something it occasionally it happens or you're sitting in a no-show and you want to know something about it sometimes a parent will send me a message um, to let me know that they can't make it you can when you log into your reading app um, click on the top right there's like a bell and it'll have numbers there these are your messages these messages okay so there's another thing that does migrate over from the teacher app is your messaging so if you have your admin group in here and your mentor group and any student that you've messaged in the past they will be in this message list so if you're sitting in a no-show you can log in and check your messages yes <laughs> you can check your messages in there so that is another bonus tip 
So it's a really good idea. It's so helpful if you have two devices. I also have a second device always as my backup if something happens. I generally teach on my iPad, which is Wi-Fi only. So if something happens and the Wi-Fi goes out, even if I lose, I, I'm like not in the class, um, I have my phone ready to use data and I can log in and I'm like 10 seconds maybe I've lost in the class. So what happens is when you leave a class, the counter stops counting. You need to teach for 25 minutes to be paid. So if you have a technical difficulty in the middle and have to leave, you just probably would have to teach that extra time. So say it was you were out of the class for 30 seconds, you would teach for 25 minutes and 30 seconds. But the counter at the top of the screen will tell you. Um, if you try to leave and you haven't taught for long enough, then you need to keep teaching or waving goodbye or using an animal to wave goodbye. If you know you're a couple of seconds short, then um, you need to complete 25 minutes to be paid. The only other condition is if you're doing a trial class and there is a no-show, you will be given a message at 15 minutes, which tells you you can leave, you click on it and it closes the class for you. So I know that was a lot to take in Alba and everybody, thanks for sticking with me. And I really hope that this has been helpful for you. Every Tuesday we're doing training on here on YouTube and I hope to be helpful. Next week we're going to talk about moments. What's a good moment? What are moments? <laughs> so they are like posts in social media. So let's talk about that next week. If you have any questions, you can leave them here in the comments or I can, uh, you can send me a private message. Um, you can find me at teacherchristy.com. I've got all my channels linked up in there and you can send me a message. So I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and something else, all of those places. So send me a message and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for your time today and I will catch you next time. All right, everyone, thank you so much. I'll see you, thank you. Can you finish? Thank you, YouTube. <laughs>